Hey guys, welcome back to Wentworth Life, the channel that talks all things Wentworth. Now, if you're new to the channel, then hit that subscribe button right now for all future updates. Now, in today's video, I am going to be talking about Erica Davidson. Now, recently I have started binge watching Wentworth from the start, and I'm currently on season one. Um, while I've been watching it this time around, it's got me thinking where were the right going with Erica's storyline and was she supposed to return in season two? Now, she played a massive part in season one, and I am genuinely convinced that she was supposed to come back in season two to continue her story from season one. But where were the writers actually taking her story? Well, grab yourselves a cup of guys and get yourselves comfy, because I am going to give you all of my thoughts on Erica Davidson. <laughs> Okay, so as I've just said, I have recently gone back and started watching Wentworth from the very beginning, and I am part way through season one. Now, while I have been watching it, it's really got me thinking about what they were doing with Erica, because Erica did play a pretty big part in season one. I mean, she became the governor after Meg Jackson's death, after playing a bit of a dirty game to get there. So the fact that Erica is the governor, of course, she's gonna have major storylines. Now, Erica, for me, is a very interesting character because there were so many hidden layers with her. She wasn't afraid to play dirty when it suited her, like the time she telephoned her reporter friend on a news story to discredit temporary governor Vera at the time. There was also the teacher guy who was supplying Tony with drugs, and when it all came out, Erica told the teacher guy to basically quit his job and leave the prison and she will remain quiet. And she did this in order to protect her job. She wanted to show general manager Derek Channing that she is the perfect person for the governor's position with no blemishes on her file. This continued on when Erica visited Tony in the wet cell, knowing full well that it was the teacher who gave her the drugs. But when Tony confirmed this privately with Erica, Erica told Tony that she was lying, and went on to say that she will not get out of the wet cell if she repeats this story to anyone else. And while Erica was saying all of this to Tony, you can see on Erica's face that she is pretty much manipulating Tony to make up a story, which of course Tony does. So this is one side of Erica, she can be manipulative and cunning to get her own way, I mean, remind you of anyone? <laughs> Despite this, Erica did have a kind side to her, I mean she was no Joan Ferguson for example. Erica did get rid of the wet cells because she thought it was inhumane for the women, which of course she weren't wrong. She was genuinely, in my opinion, trying to make Wentworth a better place for the women, but whenever there was an incident or one of the women played up, then Erica could have a nasty streak. Remember that time when Erica tried to blackmail B into telling her who bashed her, otherwise she wasn't going to be allowed to see her daughter. I mean, that was really rough, Erica. It wasn't B's fault she got bashed. Erica was also hiding some secrets, and it wasn't really revealed until episode 5. I mean, we had a few ideas of what she was hiding, but it was episode 5, The Velvet Curtain, where we learned that Erica is really into some kinky shit. Now, I'm not sure whether if Erica was a closeted lesbian or she was just simply bisexual but in denial, because she was engaged to her husband-to-be, Mark. But during a sex scene, Erica started getting, let's say, rough in bed. She ended up grabbing Mark's hand and she was telling him to pull her hair in quite an aggressive tone. Now, Mark was taken aback by this because I'm assuming that they don't normally do this sort of thing in the bedroom. But then Erica then shouts out, 
pull my fucking hair. I don't want to fuck like a married couple. <laughs> oh, God. Talk about a mood killer. It was so bizarre. And when Mark and Erica chatted, Erica couldn't really give an explanation. She just said that she wanted to try something different, which I suppose is fine. There's nothing wrong with that, but she could have at least chatted with Mark first before trying to do some rough sex. I mean, there's got to be boundaries here when you're trying things like that to protect both parties. Erica also goes on to say that sex isn't supposed to be so nice all the time. Sometimes it needs to be dirty. So Mark pretty much, the only way that he takes this is that Erica is pretty much bored with him or she's at least having bored of having sex with him. In the same episode, we get Erica's flashback moments and there is a scene where Erica goes to see a client in some sort of sex dungeon called the Velvet Curtain. I mean, I don't know if sex dungeon is the right word, maybe it is. It was some sort of kinky club where pretty much much anything goes. I mean, you could go there and just have a nice quiet drink and enjoy the views, or you could join in and have the night of your life. <laughs> anyway, while Erica is talking with her client about a case, she constantly catches herself looking around, and she's watching people kissing and dry humping and ass grabbing in leather gear. You can see that Erica is full on curious by what she is seeing. And as she is leaving the club, curiosity gets the better of her and she ends up peeking behind a curtain where she sees a load of people, men and women, not wearing very much, being whipped, spanked and tied up and a lot more. And Erica literally comes in and she just stands there and watches everything. Then there's a mystery woman who spots Erica by the curtains and she comes forward to take her hand. but. Before Erica actually goes in, her client that she was just talking to spots her and I think Erica gets a little bit embarrassed and she just ends up leaving the club. By the way, I forgot to say, while we are watching this flashback scene, we cut back to the current day where Erica is having a cheeky little play with herself in the governor's office while watching Frankie getting busy with Kim on the CCTV. <laughs> so, I go back to my earlier question question. Is Erica a lesbian or is she just bisexual or even bicurious? I don't know. We unfortunately didn't get to find out the answer to this, not for definite anyway. However, if I was to take a guess, I would say that Erica is definitely bisexual. She hasn't really delved into doing things with another woman, but she definitely would in my opinion and it wouldn't surprise me that when she does eventually experiment with a woman for the first time, she will probably prefer them in my opinion but in season one she is clearly in denial and this starts to affect her relationship with Mark and in my opinion it also starts to affect her role as governor as season one goes on. I also think that Erica is pretty much into rough sex and bondage and things like that and it wouldn't surprise me that she would probably want to go back to the Velvet Curtain and pretty much experience everything. She definitely gives me Fifty Shades of Grey vibes except in this case it's Fifty Shades of Erica. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just have to point out as well that the music that is played during the sex dungeon scene is absolutely amazing. I absolutely love it. Also, here is a funny story. I can remember watching this episode with my mother and no word of a lie. I wanted the floor to swallow me up and there's no pun intended there. <laughs> But honestly, I was so uncomfortable watching this whole episode with my mum at the time. And it wasn't so much of the Erica flashback scene. It was more because of the women talking about self-service throughout the episode. <laughs> I mean, there is just some TV scenes or episodes where you really don't need to be watching it with your mother. Also, another fact about this particular Wentworth episode. When it first aired in the UK on Channel 5, the following day, Wentworth was 
slated by the newspapers for being trashy and calling it nothing more than soft porn, which is just hilarious because as soon as Wentworth went global, the newspapers obviously backtracked and changed their tune, but I can distinctively remember the UK newspapers slating Wentworth after season 1 episode 5, and they even used an image from the episode, and it was a photo of Kim on the bed with Frankie in her hot pants where Frankie smacks her bum. Oh dear. Thankfully nobody in the UK takes newspapers seriously and Wentworth went on to become a worldwide award winning TV show. Now anyway back to Erica. So Frankie has got the hots for Erica and Frankie makes no secret of it to Erica and tries to tempt her all the way through season 1. But it wasn't one sided. No no no. Erica also had the hots for Frankie. Now apart from the self service scene that Erica was doing to herself in her office, Erica is also having sexual dreams about Frankie. So Erica is definitely 100% attracted to Frankie, but it isn't until the final episode where Frankie ends up cornering Erica in her office and kisses her up against the wall. Now at first Erica tries to push Frankie off her, but then Erica starts to enjoy it and kisses her back and just enjoys it. Frankie then leaves the office is looking totally smug and Erica has a look of horror on her face, probably because that was probably the first kiss that she properly enjoyed. <laughs> so we learned in season 1 that Erica had a lot of different layers to her and I feel we only scratched the surface with her character in season 1. Now, in the final episode of season 1, Erica was still the governor, and as far as I was aware, Erica was supposed to return for season 2. But where were the writers going with Erica's storyline? I mean, they gave the character so much material in season 1, it made no sense for her to just disappear in season 2, and I mean, it's quite clear that this storyline was going somewhere. Now I can remember when the season 1 final ever episode aired, there was a little message saying to keep watching past the end credits for a surprise. So I watched the final episode, I then watched the end credits and then after the credits I saw a hand and it was a hand putting on a black leather glove. So it was a tiny little preview for what was to come in season 2, letting us know that Joan Ferguson will be arriving in the next season. So Going by this, the writers were always going to be bringing in Joan Ferguson in season 2. So this has got me thinking, if Joan was always coming to season 2, was Joan supposed to be Erica's new deputy governor? Maybe Erica was still going to be the governor at the start of season 2 and Joan was going to be her new deputy and Vera would have remained as like a principal officer. This would have been very interesting because anyone here who is a fan of Prisoner Cell Block H will remember the original Erica Davidson and the original Joan Ferguson have some classic clashes and feuds. So maybe this is what was going to happen in season 2. Maybe we were going to see Joan as an officer slash deputy governor for season 2 and we would have seen Joan carrying out some normal duties as an officer going around and terrorizing the women and causing trouble. If this is what was going to happen I think Joan would have clashed with Erica as, the, as season 2 went on and Joan would have gone out of her way to cause as much trouble in the prison in order to get Erica sacked. In fact, I reckon if Erica had stayed around in season 2 as the governor, she probably would have been sacked by the end of episode 11, maybe episode 12, you know, after the fight between Frankie and B, and then B escapes. Maybe that's what was gonna happen, maybe that's what the, their original plan was gonna be. And then season 2 would have ended with Joan becoming the governor in the final episode, the same time where B comes back to Wentworth after shooting Brayden, where B still would have called Joan a freak and Joan and then B became top dog. So with Joan becoming governor, B becoming top dog at the end of season two, maybe that's the original plan. I don't know. I'm completely guessing here. <laughs> 
But if Erica had still been the governor in season 2, what would have been her storyline? Would Frankie's season 2 story had been different? Would Erica and Frankie had started up a secret affair with maybe Joan catching them in the act? Would Erica have ended up in Wentworth as a prisoner? Maybe that's where they were going with Erica. Well this brings me on to another theory. If Joan was always going to be the governor as soon as season 2 had started and Erica had disappeared after being fired off screen, it would have been a great twist if Erica had arrived in Wentworth as a prisoner in season 2 episode 1, you know, in the final part of that episode. Because cast your minds back guys, towards the end of season 2 episode 1, Joan ended up getting Kim Chang transferred away from Frankie. Now imagine if Erica had walked in as a prisoner at that very moment just as Kim is being taken away. Frankie's face would have dropped and Joan would have been standing there with her arms crossed with a massive smirk on her face. This would have explained why maybe the letters never got sent to Erica because she was in trouble with the law and she was on her way to Wentworth. But anyway, in the end Erica was never seen again after season 1 which I think is a massive shame and I also think it's very odd. The fact that they put so much into Erica's character it just makes no sense as to why she never returned. Now I did a little bit of a Google search and I found this interview with Leanna Walsmad who played Erica and there was an interesting question that was asked about her ever returning to Wentworth and her reply was, of course, but it's not up to me. Now I can remember some gossip and whispers around the time of season 2 being filmed where rumours were flying around that Leanna, who played Erica, had fallen out with the makers of Wentworth but I am I'm not 100% sure how much of that is true, but it would explain why Erica was so abruptly written out after a massive first season. I mean, if the writers and makers of the show didn't have any more plans for Erica, then why didn't she just get fired at the end of season 1 on screen, or even killed off? This is why I am convinced that originally they wanted her back for season 2, but something happened between season 1 ending and season 2 being written that makes me think that the writers had to change season 2 before it ever begun, but that's just my own personal opinion on that. Whatever the reason, I do think it's a shame that Erica didn't return to season 2, even if it was just to explore more of her story arc and her fiery relationship with Frankie, because I know there were, and still are, a lot of Erica and Frankie fans out there who wanted to know what happened next between these two. Anyway guys, that's my thoughts on Erica Davidson, but what do you guys think of Erica? Did you like her as a character? Did you like her as governor? Were you gutted that she did didn't return for season 2 and if Erica had returned what do you think would have happened? Let me know all of your thoughts and responses in the comments box below because I would be really interested to hear some of your points of view on this one. Okay guys well if you're still here then thank you all for watching today's video make sure you smash that subscribe button stay safe and I will see you all again very soon.